Hi everyone, it's such a pleasure to have Ding with us today. Ding is a newly minted member of faculty at UC Irvine and has a very interesting story or a few different stories to tell us about living histories. So I will just hand it over to Ding to tell us her story. Take it away, Ding. Okay, thanks for the invitation story and also the nice uh, introduction. <laughs> it's actually my first time uh, giving this type of uh, <laughs> uh, life story sharing. So it's a uh, kind of a very new experience to me. Um, so I kind of make it very personal. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is the proper way, but uh, we'll see. Um, I'm, what I'm trying to do uh, telling you guys today is, um, my basically the um, scientific or life trajectory so far. So you can see from, from this map, uh, the four red points here is where I've been spending most of my time at, which is a quite wide <laughs> distribution. And uh, you will see, um, hopefully after this 10 minutes, uh, learn how I came from uh, such a young, no, like a noisy little girl become a, a real scientist and having my own lab. Okay, and let's start with my childhood. So I was actually born uh, in China in a uh, city, uh, Jinan. I grew up, I, I spent like my first 17 years there. So this is when I was like uh, six years old, 10 years old, 12 years old. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's a very nice city. Um, it's called uh, Cities of Springs because in the water we're very famous with the springs. And we have a nice lake in the city. It's very historical. It's the capital city of a province. And we have very nice food. And um, I used to grow up, I spent many years in those type of, in, like a, I born in those, uh, uh, very historic houses. I think I moved out at age of six around that time. Yeah, so it's, I, I really like um, my hometown. Um, so hard to say like I'm really far away from there now. Yeah. Um, and nevertheless, my childhood is a very happy, you can see a good environment. My home is actually not far from the lake. So it's, I don't know where exactly lost orientation, but I'm actually growing up in a neighborhood with nice food, nice history, um, background, like uh, environment. And then I still a scientific talk. So I want to emphasize uh, my interest is to research is basically start from my middle school. So I spent six years in this um, middle school and that's when I found my interest in math and physics. So compared to all the classes of literatures, histories, economies, I totally see like that's not my <laughs> passion. And uh, as a comparison, math and physics becomes really magic to me. It's like solving puzzles. They can explain those uh, how the un universe likes, like why there's a gravity and the, even like the friction, for instance, like what happens in all those daily like uh, events. And I found like, this is amazing. This is where like uh, what I want to keep my passion is. And uh, to be very honest at that time, I have zero passion with biology <laughs> because in the textbook, biology feels like a dictionary to me. There is no reason you have to remember this is nucleus, this is membrane, this is cytoplasm. There's no reason. It's just evolution and then this is the output. You have to remember that. So to be very honest at this time, I don't like biology at all. I see myself as either a mathematician or physicist in the future. So after this is six years training, and that's why I choose to go to like a physics department for my college. So I went to the one of the best physics department in China uh, in Nanjing University. So this is where Nanjing is. So another dot. <laughs> Uh, on the map, a global map, it seems very close to each other, but it's still 650 kilometers away, which is still pretty far away. And this is the first time I left my hometown. And I do, you'll be surprised. I definitely have some 
culture shock. <laughs> Uh, the dialogue is different, even if they're all Chinese. I don't understand the language for the first few months. And uh, also, I, I, the first time I have roommates, I mean, we're all single child back in China, my generation. So the first time I have roommates and, uh, and so lucky, like we, we, we four girls and now ladies becomes very close friends for 20 years. And... Uh, also, I've been to a brand new city and uh, uh, living in a different environment. Um, I think this experience is also very important to me. Um, even though I only spent two and a half a year there, I'll explain why <laughs> later. Um, but this is the period that I learned more physics, like to the level of quantum physics, electromagnetics. So more higher level, or even more beautiful equations there. Um, but also, this is also the beginning of my lab research experiments. So I got into the real lab research like uh, uh, phase, and that's then I found like uh, the pure physics. I might offend someone. <laughs> it's totally a personal story. So the pure physics type of experiments is not as fun as I thought. So in the textbook, all the equations seems like so like, well, this is like God guiding rules. But in the, in the experiments in the labs, it seems like the most important and the most beautiful uh, rules has been solved. And it's already in the textbook. And what's left in a real physics research lab is either really, really complicated that you need like hundreds of people working on a super big projects uh, or really, really delicate that you have to go to like a very, very small level, for instance. Um, that gives me a little bit like a hesitating of like whether I want to keep being a physicist because it's not like the gravity or the uh, friction or the quantum mechanics I learned. It becomes um, like a less magic in some way to my feeling. And at this time, and this is when I moved actually to Paris. Uh, at, at my third year undergraduate, there's an opportunity from um, um, my later school, Ecole Nagma Subek Yogyakarta Dahi. They actually um, invite international students uh, go to Paris, uh, take an exam, and uh, to see they want to recruit. Uh, like a, they have a different system. So undergraduates or college uh, graduate students. And uh, my motivation at that time is very simple. I'm a 20 year old young lady. I, I can have a free trip to Paris and I'm like, uh, why not? <laughs> so I was there because of this Paris trip and took that uh, exam and uh, I did got the offer. Uh, I spent about a week and a half in Paris, visit the city, visit the university, and I found this is a very nice place. And um, I took the exam in June or July, and then I took the offer and start in Paris in September. So it's a very fast transition. Uh, again, it's very far away this time, 8,000 kilometers away. And um, I didn't speak French at all at that time. So it was another run of a culture shock, obviously. And all the classes was taught in French. Uh, the first half year is really a very challenging time for me. But after that half year, I can confident to say I can overcome any problem. <laughs> Um, nevertheless, I survived after half a year and the first quarter, even everything taught in French. I think I, I got, uh, I ranked the six in the class or something, and uh, I was so happy and I overcome that. But nevertheless, with my suspect of a friend, like a pure physics research in a lab, uh, when in Paris, when I have a, like a, the chance of doing a lab tour, I saw this um, very cute magnetic tweezer system. So basically it's a, a still in the physics department, but it's a starting the biophysics part. You have this uh, magnetic bead attached to a DNA molecule 
where you can actually apply magnetic force on top. You can see enzymes walking, stop, or trimming activities in real time. And this is the beginning of my biology research related. So uh, the lab took me for an internship and at age of like 21st, I think, 21, uh, the first time I touched a pipette. <laughs> they have to teach me like about pipetting. If you put down to the very bottom, what does that mean? If you put in the middle, <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, but nevertheless, after this internship, I found like, okay, it's different from textbook. In a lab research biology, it's really fun because nothing honestly is known. Uh, even just the basic DNA hybridization dynamics, there are many basic rules that you need to summarize to, to extract. It's like I um, have the chance to actually writing or, or finding my own textbook of biology rules, finding the most fundamental rules there, which is like the gravity I mentioned. It's not in textbook yet, so that's why the lab research becomes fun. So I spent my whole uh, master, PhD, a part of undergraduates in, in Paris and uh, working with the magnetic tweezer level uh, research. And after my PhD, uh, my PhD basically um, ended up in a new sequencing method. They have a great startup. They just announced about $60 million or something, whatever. But it's more like a still physics and technical. And my only biology is with DNA RNA molecules in vitro. And uh, after this, I found, okay, I still like physics principles, but I want to work on um, biology like uh, objects or like uh, contents. So uh, for my postdoc, I decided to um, try a total, like a more biology of like uh, contents. And that's why I moved even further, <laughs> so now 10,000 kilometers to Los Angeles and uh, to Caltech, um, the Alloys lab, and to study like uh, synthetic biology and uh, cell biology. So again, thanks to my advisor, have the courage to took me as a postdoc. Uh, like I don't know pipetium before the magnetic tweezer, before I joined the Alloys lab, I never done cloning. I don't know what is plasmid. I never do mammalian cell culture, of course. So the first half a year is still learning about like a, a cloning cell culture. I still remember the first few weeks. I feel so sorry I have to throw away the cells after the few, like division. I found like their live cells, I'm throwing them away. <laughs> so it's so sad. Yeah, so this is like a, uh, why I'm saying this is there's so many paths to go to like about physics and don't be like a shy, like a, to switch directions and trying different things. So nevertheless, in my postdoc labs, I started to work with cells and I'm focused on RNA biology and looking into their splicing activity using single molecule fluorescent institute hybridization. So uh, I won't go to all those details, but just to show like cells, dots, imaging, so another level of biology. And in the end, I now a year and a half ago, I started my own lab and it's very interdisciplinary. I combined all this magnetic uh, tweezer technique, fish imaging technique, as well as my physics background to trying to investigate RNA biology at the single molecule level quantitatively. And uh, because I have training with so many different areas, so my own lab is kind of combining different parts and becomes quite unique. Um, and this is also my, I think a good thing I want to share to the uh, like a younger generation, uh, try different things and the interdisciplinary definitely helps. Uh, for instance, for my image analysis of those dots, I can adopt things from uh, astrophysics. So stars, <laughs> it's really like the image I'm showing here. And also for the cell culture, um, you know, shaking cells uniformly in the plates sometimes is tricky. Uh, biologists have all type of tricks how you shake your plates so the cells can uniformly distribute. But uh, in, in my lab, we can easily using machine shop and Arduino to create some uh, 
random shaker that you can put directly in the incubator. Small stuff like that actually can change a lot of things too. Um, oh, I think I run out of time. Any case, I, I show you like a, how I transit like across different um, parts of the, uh, the, the, the world and also how my path to a biophysicist basically from a, a little girl naive and then grow to uh, my own lab and scientist. And uh, I'm definitely see um, uh, a much beautiful, brighter future for my own career as well. <laughs> okay, so thanks for the opportunity. I'll stop sharing now. Thank you so much, Ding. Um, on behalf of the audience, I'm clapping. Um, if anybody else has questions, please unmute and directly ask. I'll ask the obvious question. What was it like learning French? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have quite some nice stories back there. So uh, my first class, I still remember. I said in the, I, I have the exam in June or July, everything's in English. And in September, it's just the starting of the quarter. Everything is in French. And you know, French people don't speak English. <laughs> so my first class is the, like a topology mathematics and uh, there's no textbook so they just talk and <laughs> uh, and then after the class I borrowed the the notes from my classmates it's written French so it's very hard to distinguish the alphabet and I stayed six hours in library trying to translate everything um, I was lucky because I was in physics department if I'm a biologist I'm definitely dead but for physics, you still have equations, so that helps. And also, I remember one class, electrical magnetic magnets. Uh, and uh, there's a self-written uh, textbook, finally. The, the teacher actually wrote a, a, a lecture notes. And the thing is, um, because he, he tried to explain everything. So in reality, the textbook is like, everything is like French explanation and then one equation in the whole page. And every time I check back, I have to retranslate everything. I got so tired. So I hand, re I hand translate everything to Chinese. So I have a whole Chinese version textbook of that lecture. I think I shared it with the professor in the end. He doesn't have an English version, but he does have a Chinese version because of me. Um, and then I, I made a lot of tricks. Like I joined the, a research lab of the magnetic tweezer um, starting when I started the, the, the undergraduate there. So I took the position of uh, there's a lab telephone. So every time I have to pick up the phone if someone's looking for something, uh, especially looking for my professors. And uh, my, my, I forced myself to sit there to practice because with body gestures, you can always try to understand, but if telephone is very hard. And the good thing is because on the other side, if they're looking for the professor, they have to be patient, even if my French sucks. <laughs> so um, I stayed in that position for two years and it's kind of actively practice my French. Uh, yeah, and uh, then I think after year and two, things getting much better. Yeah, I was too naive, like the why I think biology is just not, not interesting. And uh, also at that time, I think I know English pretty well. French and English is kind of like Chinese dialogue. I will catch that immediately. So, but then I found, okay, that's not true. <laughs> so I, I really spent some hard time there. Yeah. That is an amazing story. <laughs> yeah. You can see I'm taking a lot of like a weird adventure because my naive, <laughs> like why to Paris? Why Salva? Like, yeah. So. Uh, Ding, uh, so, so I think that we are out of time, but yeah. I wanted to give you a few seconds if you can quickly tell us about the experience of starting a company as well as being an academic. Oh, uh, I didn't start my own company. It's my patent and uh, we hired the CEO and then the company licensed the patent. And you recommend it, <laughs> the experience? Um, I think depending on what technique it is. Yeah, okay. if it can, it can be widely used, then I think it, it's worth it. I'm planning to do it for my own lab too, because 
if you develop a technique and you want to widely share it, the commercial company can make it like a, the commercial kit and it's more like a, a, how to say, formatted in a way that is customer user friendly. Yeah. All but right. it's definitely a lot of energy <laughs> for sure. Yeah. All right. On that note, uh, thank you so much for telling us your story and closing the record.